Best dressed guy here. <laughs> it being uh, 706, we'll, we'll start the call the meeting to order. Um, can I have an acceptance of the agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Uh, just a quick announcement. John has been delayed for a couple minutes. He'll be coming in a second. And, uh, but we're going to go through some of the um, other stuff first, and, uh, and then he'll jump right in when he gets here. So why don't we start with the walk-in period? Are there any walk-ins here this evening? None. Okay, I see none. Why don't we take a minute to, is, is Dave Smith here? Hi, Dave. Why don't you come up? I know um, there was a little bit of confusion in terms of the rec uh, commission, and we'll take a second to meet you now, and then later on in the meeting Sorry. we'll talk about, uh, <laughs> talk about um, you know, the, the actual who's going to serve the positions there. So. Take a minute, tell us a little bit about yourself and okay. what you're looking to do. And yeah, sorry, I missed the first meeting. I was out of town for a couple of weeks, so. It happens. Been involved with the rec department, uh, associate member for the last couple of years, uh, hoping to get more involved with that. <clears throat> Been involved with the uh, soccer club for the last seven years, basketball association for a couple of years. Um, PTO quite a bit, so hoping to do my part and get back to the community. Great. So you were associate member for last two years? Yes. Great. And now you're looking to become the, there's one opening, right, Sean, for a yes. full? Full and then an associate. If Dave moves up, and then the right. associate. Any uh, questions for Dave? Other than thank you. Yeah, thank you right. for participating. Thanks for coming in. Okay. Thanks for coming in. Yep. And we'll we'll uh, discuss it when it comes up later on. You don't have to stay if you don't want to. Um. Great. No no other walk-ins. We'll move on to item number three, which is the uh, reports from the fourth of July activities from the uh, police and fire chief. How are you? How are you doing? Good evening. So tell us, how did it go? Much better. Uh, it went well. Thank you. Um, from our perspective, we uh, took three persons into protective custody, made nine arrests during the uh, July 3rd and 4th time frame. That's down considerably from past years. We made as many as 65. I think last year we had 28. Um, we logged 182, well, uh, the arrests were for uh, breaking and entering, disorderly, shoplifting, larceny, uh, minors in possession of alcohol, and some motor vehicle violations. Uh, we logged 182 incidents. Uh, there were no fire or fireworks related injuries that I know of. You know, we accomplished this. We used 32 Sichuan police officers, seven Mass State Police Troopers from the uh, Fire and Explosion, Explosion Investigation Section, four coercive police officers, four Plymouth County Deputy Sheriffs, and we had a, a command vehicle with the uh, uh, staff with four persons from the uh, Fire Marshal's Office. Uh, the State police report to me that they seized about 350 pounds, which is a, a box truck full of uh, illegal fireworks. Uh, and I guess the big thing in the costs were down this year, about $6,000 less than last year. Uh, that payroll? Yes. And the, as far as the, uh, the 182 incidents, uh, that's down considerably from... Um, not to say that we didn't have things going on. I mean, we, we got a call for a fight down in, the, in South Hemlock. It probably involved 200 people. And uh, we had a windshield get broken out up on uh, Oceanside Drive. But I think overall, it was a much safer and more enjoyable <coughs> for all. I, I've gotten a number of phone calls. I think somebody told me that there was a complimentary letter in the, in the Patriot Ledger the other night. Uh, <coughs> you know, I think it, it, we can attribute it. We, we took a proactive approach. A public information campaign. The uh, chief thought up the uh, permit process and just a cooperative effort with, uh, you know, all the agencies involved. Uh, the fire department, the DPW helped out greatly. The different law enforcement agencies and the uh, state fire marshal's office. Um, so hopefully this is a trend. It's it's going to continue. Just as a matter of comparison. Uh, these are unofficial numbers, but I understand Plymouth had uh, 54 arrests on the night of the 3rd and 27 on the night of the 4th. Those used to be our, our numbers. Uh, state
statewide. I know there were a number of, uh, there was actually a, a, an explosion in Wareham involving uh, a considerable amount of uh, unpermitted fireworks and uh, uh, a number of major injuries throughout the state. So we didn't, you know, we didn't see that. So hopefully we're heading in the right direction. Chief, what, when you say 182 incidences, that's what we logged. Right. So what? What is the majority of those type? Is it? Um, is it just any phone call that comes in? Is it? Uh, yeah. I mean, some some of those are obviously are administrative things that we do that are part of the normal routine. But you know, many of them were uh, disturbance calls. Uh, uh, you know, just just complaint sort of things. You know, right. really. Uh, but it, it's down. I, I think. Uh, I don't have the exact number, but as I recall, that the uh, number last year was was approaching 300. So mm -hmm. uh, it was it was definitely a much better. I think the signal is we get the message out that things yeah. are going to be different. That's right. And um, you know, and people people heeded it. Mm -hmm. We had uh, you know, there's a lot of work to get the message out, and just you know, it's to be down there. But we had we had a problem before, like 12 years ago, Chief Green. Try to do the permits of the bonfires, but there was, he didn't have anything in place to stop the people that were just going to do it anyway. But we were on the beach at, very early and we had, uh, that's what Al Bang had, we had a, a front end loader and a, DP, and a DPW dump truck in Hamarok in and situate. So if they started bringing it out, we were going to just go down and throw it in the loader and, and take it out. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the people down, well, I was down in Hamarok, the people were very cooperative. You know, 90%. We're on board for this because you know they're getting tired of it too. Yeah, um, and it did. It it, um, it turned out to be a really really good night. Yeah. Well, I think by disseminating the information early and telling people, look, if you want a permit, you got to put it on your own homeowner's insurance. I think that probably made a lot of people begin to think, well, you know what, it's fun to have you know pyromaniacs and all these other fire you know go out there, but once they realize that there's liability attached to it, then they like, you know what, let's step back. And I have to tell you, I commend you both on doing it. It's uh, I, I, in Sand Hills, I was down there, and I thought it was a lot. It was very enjoyable. It was much more of a family atmosphere and not as crazy as it's been in a few other years in the past. And, uh, you know, it was quiet. It's a better way. I hate to say quiet, but I'm like, it was. It was much more. Um, you know, we had quite a few people come in for permits, and once they realized they were going to be liable for it, they're going, I'm not going to sign that. Of course not. Yeah. It makes sense. A lot of things can go, go bad when you have a bonfire. It's like, no kidding. Yeah, That's burn right. a whole bunch of houses down, and guess what? Who's going to be responsible for it? Yeah, yeah so absolutely. You cut down on the attraction, which has always been a problem to, to just attract people that have got no, nothing to do with any of the beach areas and just come down to, to cause a problem. Um, you know, one thing I, I should have mentioned, we, we did clear the spit a couple of times on the night, actually on the night of the third and the fourth. There is an individual that's going to be charged out there with um, will be summons to court for possession of illegal fireworks and actually discharging the fireworks into the protected area there. So that will be going into court too. So, uh. Rick, any? Yeah, the only thing I just want to add, I agree with, with John, absolutely. And uh, speaking of the spit, as you guys know, we've done a very good job. You folks have done a good job keeping it the spit itself for the last couple of years. And I just, we just got to keep it up for next year and the year beyond so word gets out that this wasn't just a, um, you know, a once in a rare event that we were paying attention more and getting it together. So you keep building on what you're doing now and you keep doing it again next year and year after that, word will get out. It's just, it's going to change the culture. It'll be much more family oriented and, you know, congratulations to you. And then one other thing here in your memo, it says there were numerous calls for disturbances and there was a fight involving about 200 people in, in South Hum Rock. It's like, you kind of mentioned that in passing. I'm like, Most wow, thank goodness you folks were there because if you weren't there, I bet you that 200 would have gotten they, a little bigger. We got there, most ran into Marshfield. It's right in close proximity. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What was once our problem? No passport needed. So <laughs> <laughs> actually, we were able to disperse them. Yeah. But I mean, that's, that's just, to me, emblematic of what this could be. You're not you saying that the people from Marshfield, is that? No, border I'm wars here. Uh, no. it's right on the so great great job let's keep it up the only thing I would add is I was at Peggotty Beach and typically after the fireworks or whatever we watch them there you see Hummerock burn 
and the bonfires were all at a very manageable level. Last year you'd see them and you're like, gosh, if you see it that high on the rise and it's gotta be, you know, as high as a house and it was, it was, you know, there were still a number of them, but they were all at a manageable level. So it looked, it looked really good. So thank you for your, your hard work. Um, I just um, also want to commend the Harbor Master um, my first Fourth of July here in Situate. It was quite an experience. Um, but uh, I also was going to mention the spit. I'm glad you mentioned that, that it seemed very well controlled. And um, <coughs> I said to Chief Judge today that um, since I'm always on them about all the bad stuff, <laughs> that this is an opportunity to really commend them for something that we've been really working together, I think, in the last couple of years on enforcement and enjoyment of public lands and public laws so that everybody can benefit. And in this particular instance, um, I just, I couldn't be prouder of the public safety and the Harbor Master because I think it went very, very well and it was all due to their efforts and their in the administration. In the memo there, I mentioned the various law enforcement agencies and the fire, and I certainly <coughs> consider that the Harbor Master law enforcement agency, absolutely, they were, they, uh, Played a very important part of this. Right. And kudos to uh, Lieutenant Detective G.D. Stewart for right. bringing all the folks down and uh, they really keeping the fireworks down. You know, like I said, they confiscated a, a box truck load of it. That's great. And, uh, you know, we want, we want people to have fun, but just safe fun. So, but thank you guys very much. Could, oh, could yeah. I just interrupt for one second? Because I was going to raise it under other business, but I'd rather raise it here since, uh, Rick, you're here. Uh, people don't realize that, you know, if you go down Front Street, you see a lot of American flags from the uh, VFW. Um, the fire department and the police were very helpful in trying to set it up in preparation for the 375th. But I'm going to tell you right now, Rick Judge, your chief, <laughs> got up there and helped put up flags on Front Street. And, you know, um, I was going to say another other business, didn't expect you here, Rick, but I just want to say it now. I commend you for doing it, and I'm saying it publicly be because people should know that. You know, it's not easy and you know people don't realize I mean here is the chief of the fire department helping out trying to help his town and I commend you I heard that and I said I was like that's really neat it's nice to see those are the small things that make our town better and I appreciate that and you and the town should know that volunteer for it meetings <laughs> <laughs> but thank you thank you very much thanks chief okay let's move on to uh, number four which is discussion and a vote for a new uh, drain layers license JJ trucking on up you can just say your name and your address. Uh, my name is Jim Barrasso, 305 Brockton Ave in Evington. I'm the owner of J&J Trucking. Great. And you are looking for a drain layers license? Yes. Did you have one previously? Not in situate. Not in situate? I have a number of towns. I have Braintree, Evington, Holbrook active right now. Great. actually had septic license in situate previously. Great. Just you haven't had them revoked at all, for no by the towns for for not doing it. I, I, because you haven't been to our town before, I assume. Right. So that's so why I'm asking, just to make sure yeah. nobody. Nope. Fair enough. Okay. Sean? Yeah, I had hadn't heard of this company before, so I had had to do a little investigating. And one person I did talk to, um, Ricky Turner, spoke very highly of oh. you. So Ricky I did I didn't have to ask any further. He. Um, I have no problem with this at all. He's been doing it for a long time, and I think he might have done a job on Gilson Road. So, right. Now, do you come in because you have a specific... I have a specific so job on Gilson Road. Right. And then as other things pop up, you just you right. already have the license. Great. A motion? motion? Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a drain leader's license to uh, J.J. Trunking, Jim Verasso of Abington, Mass. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks for coming in, Jim. Good luck. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll move on to uh, number five, which is uh, the discussion of three entertainment permits. And the first one is um, Julie and Dave Keefe. Come on up. Good evening. Hi. Good. Great. It's your 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> so you're getting married? <laughs> <laughs> Already did that. Yeah. So just your name and your address, please. Dave Keith, 19 Glaze Road. Julie Keith, 19 Glaze Road. Great. So tell us a little bit about your event. Uh, 
my son matt is getting married as my other kiddos did at the house will probably have a an officer to guide people about it's about 5 p.m to 10 p.m we've invited the neighbors should be much more civil than say halloween when i get egged every year so and this is for saturday august 13th yes and i see you have it from 4 30 to 10 and you've notified all your immediate neighbors yes and it's a four-piece band uh something like that something yeah. like that might be more i'm not exactly sure but. Okay. any questions congratulations yeah. thank you have fun it's not us <laughs> <laughs> oh, but still do you have a motion? Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to Julie and Dave Keefe of 19 Glades Road for an amplified four-piece or more band on Saturday, August 13, 2011 from 4.30 till 10 o'clock p.m. All the immediate butters must be notified of this event. Second. Second by Mr. Murray. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Have Congratulations. Great Enjoy. Have fun. See um, Now the uh, Situate Harbor Yacht Club. Mr. Gard. Good evening, Steve Gard for the Situate Harbor Yacht Club. Uh, before you folks tonight are two outdoor entertainment applications for the club. The, uh, the first being held on July 22nd from 7 to 11 p.m., uh, which will have either a two-person band or a disc jockey during the breaks, but it will have amplified music. It will be on the harbor side of the pool area furthest from the street in the abutters. The second event, both of which are annual events and happen at the same uh, day of the week each year, in the summer is the Luminaria, which is a Friday evening for, on August 5th from 6.30 to 10 p.m. The entertainment will be a DJ. This particular uh, entertainment area will be set up behind the clubhouse under the tent, like it was last year, same place, um, on the patio. It's a family event, pretty low key, that one is. So. What was the first event, Steve? The first event is the Adult Pool Social, and that's on July 22nd. Right. From 7 to 11 or as long as you'll let us stay open and um, that one again will have amplified music on the harbor side of the pool so if you, if you picture it's really close to the, the rock wall right. mm -hmm. Wait, any uh, questions oh. comments oh. okay how about we'll do them both separately so a motion for the first one <coughs> move the board of selectmen vote to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to the Situate harbor yacht club 84 jericho road for amplified music friday july 22nd 2011 from 7 to 11 p.m at the pool area all immediate butters must be notified of this event second second by mr harris for the discussion all in favor aye aye, aye. it's unanimous and now the uh, second one Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to the Situate Harbor Yacht Club of 84 Jericho Road for amplified DJ music on Friday, August 5th, 2011, from 6.30 to 10 p.m. All immediate abutters must be notified of this event. Second. Second by Mr. Harris for the discussion. Uh, Steve, did you need that later, or is, is 10? I no, assume that, you, that's the, you picked the time. A, this is a kid event, so it's not, it's not unusual. We'll probably get over even before that, but 10 o'clock is the outside window. Right. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank, Thank you very you, much. I should say a family event. It's yes. a little bit more. It involves the, all, all the family members uh, can participate now. It's the, it's the event where we light up the harbor with the little um, yeah. candles. You know, yeah. Well, it's candles. Heritage yeah. Days weekend. Correct. Right. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank right. you, Thanks, Thanks, Steve. Okay, number six. Um, discussion, vote, award of annual DPW supply contracts. Al? Good evening. Can I just say something, Tony? Sure. I, Al, this is great. I don't recall seeing this every year. You know, and, you know, I mean, it's kind of small and stuff like that, but it's, it's kind of nice to see. It's just, you know, I looked um, it over and enjoy reading thank it. You. Thanks. Yeah. I hope it's not a lot of work to produce it oh, for no, us. You know, I, you know, it's just, it is nice to see. Straightforward. Just push a button, right? No, oh, it is. It's a lot of work. But, um, the good news and the bad news is there's a lot more contracts here for you to uh, execute on tonight than in the past. Uh, primarily because what we did was we went out and, and sought three-year bids. That's, and therefore, many of these contracts are um, Expired. much higher value and therefore involve your participation. And we went out for the contracts, such as for Road Salt, uh, we received a bid price uh, for this year and we, we at the town's sole 
discretion may uh, ask the selected vendor to supply us for the following year and then the year after that. So if they're willing to hold their prices and we think that's a good price in the marketplace, then we would simply extend that contract for the, the year or year after that and not have to go through the whole bidding process, which is fairly time consuming and, and uh, has some cost involved. In so it. it's a contract for one year with an option of potentially up to two? Correct, at the, at the town's sole option. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, so I read them all, I'm sure we all did. Um, we have to make motions for each individual one. Yes. And just so everybody knows, these contracts, if they exceed $25,000, then they have to go through this bidding right. process. Right, so I, I won't go through in, in odious detail, but for instance, on the road sold contract. One, one second, Al, Al oh, I'm sorry. Rick, did you have? Yeah, I, I'm not <clears throat> questioning about any one of them in particular, um, but roughly speaking, just, I mean, how many of these are new to us suppliers? Is there like a wholesale turnover here on these, or is it like roughly half are new, or just um, ballpark? Generally, these are not new suppliers. They're suppliers, sorry? Four are new? Well, okay, that's good. They're new supplier. The, in the chemical area, uh, they, they tend to bounce back and forth between yeah. different chemical companies. Sure. Holland might have had one item this year, but next year they sure. have the other, and Mazen has the other. Oh, that's so, fine. That's good. Yeah, so there are. Yeah, you're right. I think there's two brand new ones, but Al's right. They're new for the contract this term, but not a new vendor to the town. Right. Ever. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm the clerk. You want me to read them, or do you yeah. want to uh, rotate do you them want, through? Do you want to say anything? No, I, I, I provided you with material. All these yeah. were duly posted, bid, um, uh, advertised, uh, opened appropriately. Uh, the, the town administrators reviewed all the administrative procedures and, and believes that this was done properly. I believe I'm speaking for you. Was. Thank you. Right. And uh, you say you do believe. No, so. it was. <laughs> okay. There's a good chance. Uh, Sean, did Can you I have just jump in, just ask one, or make one quick comment? Al, will you think it's necessary, I used to say this to Rick, on occasion, could you have them run through the transfer station and use our scale? Yes. Just to keep everyone honest, if you right, suspect. We, do. Uh, we occasionally will ask the road salt truck to go run across the scale, That'd be for great. instance. <clears throat> Thank you. And uh, we do that with many of our suppliers. Good. Yeah. Thanks. So, Rick, why don't you Good read thinking. through them, and then we'll... Um, Sure. Uh, and then if anyone has <coughs> questions, we'll just ask. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for road salt at the bid price of $60.28 per ton to Eastern Minerals of Western Mass for the period of July 2011 through June 2012 with the option to extend for an additional one or two years of the toll town's sole discretion. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for sodium hydroxide for water treatment at the bid price of $1.6946 per gallon to Borden and Remington of Fall River, Mass. for the period of July 2011 through June 2012 with the option to extend for an additional one or two years of the town's sole discretion. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for sodium carbonate for wastewater treatment at the bid price of 397.50 per ton to Monson Companies of South Portland, Maine for the period of July 2011 through June 2012 with the option to extend for an additional one or two years at the town's sole discretion. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for potassium hydroxide for water treatment at the bid price of $4.3258 per gallon to Harcross Chemicals of Nashua, New Hampshire for the period July 2011 through June 2012 with the option to extend for an additional one or two years at the town's sole discretion. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for supply <coughs> of liquid aluminum sulfate at the bid price of $1.05 per gallon to Holland Chemical of Adams Mass for the period of July 2011 through June 2012 with the option to extend for an additional one or two years at the town's sole discretion. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for supply of liquid chlorine at the bid price of $300 per cylinder to JCI Jones of Merrimack, New Hampshire for the period July 2011 through June 2012 with the option to extend for an additional one or two years at the town's sole discretion. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for supply of sodium fluoride at the bid price of $36.24 per 50 pound bag to Borden Remington of Fall River, Mass. for the period of July 2011 through June 2012 with the option to extend for an additional one or two years at the town's sole discretion. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for water treatment analytical services to Groundwater Analytical of Buzzards Bay, Mass. At the unit prices quoted in their bid response opened on June 20, 2011 for the period July 2011 through June 2012 with the option to extend for an additional one or two years at the town's sole discretion. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. And the last one. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for wastewater treatment analytical services to Groundwater Analytical of Buzzards Bay, Mass. At the unit prices quoted in their bid response opened on June 20, 2011 for the period of July 2011 through June 2012 with the option to extend for an additional one or two years at the town's sole discretion. Second. Second one, Mr. Harris. Any further discussion? Uh, I guess we can just know. I assume it was written that way because we didn't have the quote then. But this quote is $7,076 per... Just so those of you watching. Oh, groundwater analytical? Yeah. Yeah. Because we got it after the fact. The last two, I think. Um, yes. uh, well, this one was 7000 but if you'd go for three years, it'd right. be, you know, and also it's at unit prices. So, for instance, if we do a lot of extra analysis, it may run exceed that. So that's why we had you guys do it. And just so people know, these are pu these are all public documents. And on most of these, you know, there were three or four different bids that came in on them, and, and the lowest bid wins. And there were considerable savings between the first and second one, so yeah. the process seems to work. I think we still need to vote that All one. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Great. Number seven, um, uh, discussion vote, uh, seawall repair contract for Ocean Avenue. Kevin Cafferty or Al Bangard? Right. Uh, I, Kevin is taking a day vacation today, so I thought I'd handle this for him. Uh, this is the contract for the repair of the seawall uh, at the end of, at the junction of Turner Road and Oceanside. This is the seawall that breached last winter that caused the displacement of many of our families from the homes down in that, in that basin area. What we are doing here is awarding the contract for the engineering services to do the proper engineering for that seawall repair. Uh, we went out and solicited proposals from four qualified firms that we've had good experiences with. We received four good proposals from Vine, Kleinfelder, Coastline Engineering, and Tibbetts Engineering, all of who have uh, a, a good resume of this kind of work. Um, we analyzed those four proposals. I had a team consisting of myself, Kevin, and our two engineers, Dan and Sean McCarthy. Um, and the result was um, we felt like I any one of them could do it. However, Coastline Engineering came in at a significantly sharper price at $27,980, and we would recommend then that the board award the engineering contract to Coastline Engineering of Marion, Massachusetts. Sean? So this is for engineering work that hasn't been done yet. They're going to tell us what we need to do to that area of seawall? Yes, this is a very um, tricky, specific piece of engineering. A seawall is a... You know, it looks kind of dumb just sitting there, but it's a very complicated device based upon gravity and the footings and, and then the seal that's inside. Undoubtedly, we will end up repairing, although you look at the breach, the breach might be 30 feet wide. We'll end up repairing about 150 feet of seawall in order to get stability on any side of it. The seawall, when it's done, will be uh, at a minimum two feet higher in the section where it's being repaired to meet today's current code standards of how, how, how high seawalls should be given coastal conditions, et cetera. Um, we would expect that the, uh, they would be ready to go out to bid for a contractor to do this work in three to six months, and then the work would, could begin this winter. So the, the engineering, engineering firm that we awarded to will make the recommendations that the contractor has to do to make the repairs, then they'll put their stamp on it when it's done. Yes, they will actually, they'll go out and do some uh, drilling, coring, <coughs> finding out what's there, look for where the, where the next possible point for a, a junction should be, um, what, what's the soil surface like underneath, uh, and then uh, design, the, design the final fix right. and write the specifications for the contractors, put their stamp on it as you say, and then uh, manage the bidding process, the contract selection, and then the oversight of the contractor. And this, you know, I've asked it before, you don't think Kevin can do this? Absolutely not. No, first of all, he doesn't have a stamp. And the stamp, when the engineer puts the stamp on it, 
the engineer and the engineering firm through their through their uh, professional association and through their insurance is saying that if this design fails we eat the cost for how long ever well got that Kim <laughs> so the liability for the liability for the project transfers to them uh, that they've designed it properly um, so it's, it's like designing a car you know you you could probably cobble together a car, but if someone's injured in it, uh, you'd be liable. In this case, uh, they have the expertise to be able to put that stamp on it, and then they're insured just like a phys physician would be insured. Okay. We would have the expertise to oversee its uh, construction, perhaps, uh, but definitely not its design. All right. Mr. Murray. So does this include oversight of the construction, or is the construction and oversight going to be completely different? Is there some bleed through from this engineering aspect into clerk of the works type stuff later? Uh, they would, we will do, we will most likely, I believe we are doing the clerk of the works. We're doing the actual monitoring of the construction, but then they're monitoring us, monitoring it. Got it. Okay. Just, just a, maybe a point of clarification. You may have misspoken. I may be wrong. But the, the point of like, when you say the, um, I think the engineering company would probably be on the hook for about six years tops, Al. Okay. And then thereafter, um, it probably wouldn't. But at least they would certainly have liability exposure in the event that that wall were to fail in that time period. So, so I, there's a warranty period. I only say it because if somebody's watching, they'll say, I remember when so-and-so, Mr. Banger, told me it was indefinite. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I, and I suspect the answer is yeah. probably six years max. Okay, so that but just a, That's my, my only. In, in. Does it differ with different types of projects like bridges? Well, and things? um <laughs> If it's a structure, which this would be considered, it would probably fall under what's called the statute of repose, which is a little tricky statute that says okay. discovery rule within a certain period of time, but the maximum amount of time you can discover it six years after it's been built. So I think that might fall into play. I may be wrong, but that's why. So, Kim, can you scratch the word ever? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that was ever Allegedly. in terms of my expected yes. longevity. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Two quick questions um, that I'm sure people are, are asking. Who owns the property that the land is? This property appears to be beyond the limits of the private property ownership. So, the town so therefore, the it's town public, owns property, it. yes. public property, yes. Uh, public property. Additionally, it's protecting uh, significant um, public infrastructure um, and numerous uh, homes, far beyond the five or six that are directly front of the wall. And how are we paying for it? This is being paid for by uh, capital money appropriated at the town meeting. So the override money that we voted for, for... Uh, this is, yeah, yes, capital money, right. Right. Yes, override So money. the 400 and something thousand dollars. Well, actually, um, Mr. Vignani, this is the... This is the... You remember the capital plan? plan. We, we oh, have right, right, right. 500,000. So there's two, two buckets. It was 400,000 for... And then there's the capital plan on ongoing yeah, stuff. That other capital is uh, for road work and seawalls. Right. Great. So it's coming from the capital plan. Right. Just Mr. just one Manny? one question now. When the um, state engineers were at the seawall after the breach, they were talking about making sure or ensuring there was like a, a separation between the base of the wall and decks. I think they said six feet. Or was it ten feet? I, I can't recall. But I just know that they were saying that that was kind of important. Is that something or the committee and you and certainly CLE is going to look at because obviously a lot of people would want to tack on to the wall and one of the problems is those things just ripped apart and creating more problems for access. That was the real issue, yeah, especially real if you needed to get there. right now because the, um, several of the property owners in that area have reconstructed decks um, within a few feet of that wall. Um, our position would be that if we need to go in and repair the wall, um, we don't feel like it's, it would be the town's expense to remove the deck and then replace the deck that was re, uh, built during the time when the deck had been destroyed by the seawall. So that, that's something to hash out okay. as we go forward. All right. Rick? Since you mentioned access, I was going to ask this question under other business, but since you're here too, um, other seawall repairs going on, for example, up at Third Cliff, <coughs> where they, it's a riprap wall and it's got the flat surface on it, and people have historically walked along that flat surface and fished from it and used it to get down to the spit. Is that public as well, all the way across the top of those walls? So people can't put a 
a fence going across that wall if they have a house right behind it? Do you happen to know? I think it depends on the specific area. Um, in, in some other areas that I'm more familiar with, not so much at the base of the cliffs, I, I would surmise that at the base of the cliffs, those are pretty much well within the inner tidal area and well outside of property lines, but I can't say for sure. Okay. But, but I know in many other parts of town, we have some unusual situations with property lines running well out into the water. Correct. And then adjacent properties that end shy of what seems to be a seawall being built. So right. it depends on the specific piece okay. of property. Generally, th those below the cliffs, I, I really I believe probably they're more okay. or less in the public okay. domain. Thanks. And while we're on that area, over on the, I guess, the beginning of Third Cliff, we're on the right-hand side of Peggotty, we're doing work on the seawalls there. There's, a, you know, a big front end loader and some stuff over yeah. there is that is that town work or is that something else on the seawall that's the same project i'm talking is that about the same project yeah yeah so the end of town way that's private isn't it al i didn't think we were doing work there the end of town way um there's a lot of public land that's at, public at the end of town way town i would By say you. town way extension for instance is uh 50 percent of that land there is i know it's 53 percent of the land is public land on town way extension I was just unaware if you go up that to, we're if you go up to the right, Dickens right Row. Go down Dickens the row. end and turn right on Dickens Row. Yeah, Dickens Row. That's right. But on that seawall, they're doing work on that seawall. I didn't think we were, Al, are we? I yeah. don't believe we are, oh. yes. And that's it. Right. And, they, and the other thing they're doing is they're also temporarily storing some of the big blocks there, and they put them up on the back of a truck, drive it up Collier, yeah. right by oh. up Gilson, right, by right, my right. house, and then they, then they go in uh, down by Michael. And then they drive to the end of the uh, seawall there, the southern terminus of the seawall. Oh, but that's part of the whole project, and the company is um, northern. Yeah, northern, and they're doing a good job. I mean, they're you should see them set these things in. They pick them up by chains, and then they rotate around like a big puzzle, put it down, up. pick it up again, you know, move it just in. I have, I've seen a, some examples of that. I just don't know how they end up getting the rock in the right place. It's incredible. They do. And then they have to skirt, get out of there as the tide comes in. Yeah. Any further discussion on number seven? Want to mo back to the motion for um, the engineering for the seawall? Move the board a second vote to award the following contract for engineering services to Coastline Engineering of Marion, Mass. for a total price of $27,980 based on requests for proposals opened and reviewed on July 5th, 2011. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Danny. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you, Al. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Number eight is a discussion vote update on committee, commission, board, and council application. Is this, Trisha, is this you or Kim? Nope, it's Kim. It's yeah. So in our packet, I see that we have the old form. Right. And then after that, we've got a couple other forms. Um, the first one seems to be more informational, so we know how to get in touch with people. And then after that is, is a great list of all the, the different boards and stuff that people have um, to choose from. It seemed like a more comprehensive. Uh, our office reviewed uh, these applications from probably 10 to 12 different communities and combined the best of all of those into this application. And I'd also like to um, compliment Judy Gilligan from our office, compliment from our office on this as well. And it seems like a great opportunity to, to have a couple of opening paragraphs about how the residents really help our town by volunteering. Uh, and so that made it more user friendly, I think. And then get their information. And then also having a listing of all the possibilities seemed like a good idea as well. Uh, the, the piece you see on the third page is that I've spoken to Bill Sheehan, our IT <coughs> director, about having, and I'm sure I'm not going to use the right terminology, but having this on the website so they can actually just fill it out right there and then and then email it to our office. And there is a little bit of a cost involved for that, which we will look at, but ultimately that will be the easiest um, and most expeditious way of people getting in touch with us people I hope because now it's a little bit cumbersome but at least with this new one if, if the board is in agreement we can get this put right up on the town website by the selectmen 
and, uh, and start using it right away. They can download it, send it to me, uh, or send it to the selectman's office, and we can at least get started and then go with the other. I think it's a PDF on it, hopefully on a later date. Yeah, just are you going to keep the first keep this one as well so this one's going away, one's going away. and just these two would stay two page document as opposed to one good Tom? nice job great long overdue I mean, the fact that we have typed in on the old one email address shows that this is really outdated. Yeah, so it's nice point. to see that we're getting it um, updated. Thank you, Kim. Yeah, it's, it's great. Um, I think I speak for the whole board when I really talk about what you're saying in the beginning here. The people that serve on these boards are so vital to this community, and they really make the town work, you know, and really, really help the town take steps towards improvement. So, um, and you'd be shocked at the number of opportunities there are to be involved in the town. You hear friends come up to us, oh, I want to be involved, I want to be involved. Well, now you can just go online and see the, there's got to be 30 choices of different things that you can do. Um, something's got to pique your interest. And um, um, it's important that we get new blood in here looking at this stuff and, and being involved in the town. So mm. I think this is a good, uh, a good step in the right direction. So can we have a motion? Move that the Board of Selectmen support the updated Board of Selectmen's Committee, Commission, Board, and Council application. Second. Second by Mr. Murray. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Number nine, the annual appointment process. So we have... Move the Board of Selectmen vote to reappoint Elise Klein to the Water Resource Committee. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, it is unanimous. Move that Thank the you, Elise. Sorry. Move that the Board of Selectmen rescind their vote, making Ralph Studley a full member of the Recreation Commission, and further that the Board appoint Ralph Studley as an associate member of the Recreation Commission. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Just. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, just a quick explanation. Um, for this when we voted last time we did it in error um, Mr. Smith was here earlier and he was supposed to be the full-time one and Mr. Studley was supposed to be the associate one so we're just correcting our um, our faux pas last time it's nothing that Mr. Studley did um, it's just the uh, we just voted it improperly so this one is rescinding the full-time and making him an associate member um, second all, all those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. it's unanimous Will the Board of Selectmen vote to appoint David Smith as a full member to the Recreation Commission? Second. Second by Mr. Nanny. Further discussion? Dave Smith was here before us this morning, uh, this after this evening. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Smith. And lastly, move the Board of Selectmen vote to appoint Republican, Democratic, and unenrolled election officers and workers per the list submitted by their respective committees. Second. Second, Second. by Mr. Danny. We've, we've been given three lists, one for the Republicans, one for the Democrats, and one for the unenrolled. And always, these are, we've always, the clerks always read those names as a rule. Mr. <laughs> Thank you for looking out for me, Mr. Harris. <laughs> I'm just looking forward to Arbor Day. <laughs> we, could, we could all take a party. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Well, why don't we just say as written? I did. Um, per the list submitted we get a by second? their respective committees. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Okay. We're on number 10 now, which is the discussion. Vote for the Minot Beach easement temporary extension. Um, I Trish? Have a, yeah. I have a point in order. The attachment that you have um, in your packet is wrong. I've given Rick a new motion. Okay. And, um, if you could move that and then open up for discussion, I believe there's someone here from the Beach Association that might have a comment or two. But I apologize for the error, but what's in your packet's wrong. Okay. So we can make a motion and then have discussion and vote after I that. I gave Rick a new motion. Sorry, Kim. Unless you'd like to discuss it beforehand. Okay. So you're, how about a motion? You're the chair. What do you want me to do? Why don't we have a motion? On it first, but oh, we'll do it after the okay. motion. All right. And then we can. Move the Board of Selectmen continue to hold the current terms and conditions of the Mine at Beach Agreement until otherwise amended or renewed by the Board. Second. Second by Mr. Any. Further discussion? 
Trisha, that's the background. Yeah. I'll start, and then you can jump in because if I mix it up, then you can correct me. Um, there's an uh, an agreement between the town and the Minot Beach Association that gives the town use of the Minot Beach Southern part. It's a 50-year agreement, and that is expired. We have met, um, and Joe Norton was very involved in this, and I think Tony, you had some involvement while I was away. Um, to look at the, uh, an extension or a renewal, whatever, with a few clarifications that town council has provided. We're still in that process, but the Beach Association admittedly was concerned that there was an expiration and no sort of limbo kind of thing. So this car continues everything in full force and effect until we amend, renew, change, or do whatever, at whenever. So, and please feel free if you know you have anything to add or I represented that correctly. Well, I mean, if I you'd like to just come up to the mic and just say who you are for. Sorry. Uh, Leslie Dinell, um, Three Cliff Estates Road. Um, I mean, Trisha, she pretty much said it all. What we, um, and I have information to give you. Um, I found out about a year ago. We never knew that we actually had ownership of the beach um, from the area that we found out we do own. Um, and I found out through Al Banger, just indirectly, um, long story, I won't even go into all that, but um, she was. Uh, a couple of board members, I'm on the North Central Beach Association board, uh, we went down to Plymouth and we researched uh, back to 1650, uh, Timothy Hatherley, and that's what I have copies to give to all of you, oh, and you yeah. can look at it whenever. Um, we're, we're willing to do one of two things, uh, either renew the easement again, it was a 50 year easement, if we can, or um, we don't really care to own the beach, uh, we would like to gift it to you, which I understand has to go before a town vote, I think, somebody. I it has to go to town meeting. And it's a whole process. So tonight is more about seeing if you're willing, what, you know, getting it going and what's involved. You know, I don't really know legal, I don't know any of that. It's just, um, as a board, we really, it seems like the town should own the beach, and we're willing to um, let you own it, and it, however you want it to happen, if you're willing to let that happen. So, gifting it, another easement, if you want to just do it that way, if that's easier, and not have to do gift, but we're willing to just give it to the town. So, which portion are we? Where we're going? Which portion are we talking about? Just roughly, from um, from I, what I've to got what? Copies of the maps okay. for all of them. Um, yeah. It starts at Grasshopper Lane. Yeah. Um, and it, um, it goes to about Thank you, Christine. roughly 15 to 16 homes down Surfside Road. Okay, perfect. Um, do you have another one? Are these just these four? I do have another. Okay, Trisha, do you? I have plenty. Um, so we, it's that area, then to the left I'm of sorry, Grasshopper. I'm sorry, you said Grasshopper down to down Surfside? Down about 15 homes down Surfside. So roughly um, a third of the way down Surfside, right. probably. So in 19, um, I think it was uh, Mr. Collier, I can't remember his first name, he um, sold the property to the North City Beach Association for a dollar back in 1921. Then uh, Ray Gaffey, who was head of, uh, I think it was the president of the Beach Association um, in 1958, entered into this easement, the 50-year easement with the town. There's actually two easements. There's this easement, which is strictly the beach. Then there's uh, the easement, which is a seawall, permanent seawall um, easement that was entered into. The legality of all of that, I don't know, um, because I'm on the seawall committee, so I know that there's not a lot of money for seawalls. So what that means, I don't, I don't know. Um, but the, so there are two easements, which is in that package. Mm -hmm. Both of them should be there. Um, basically, we just kind of wanted to get it going, and I've talked with Trisha, and um, she suggested this would be a good way to start. So. so it's, it's down on Surfside, so the beach there, that's public beach then? Down on the other side, on the other side of the house. Yeah, it's really actually, what we're talking about here is more than I think all of you probably think in terms yeah. of that beach. They do have a bigger map. further to the south. No, I know that, yeah, I used to, my first, I first lived in my up here, I used to walk that beach all the time. This is a huge expanse area they're talking about. It's good. So and the association actually owns the strip 
on the, the walk, the street, right, to the, from the street to the wall? Because didn't I think we had to get approval for some of the benches and stuff we put up there? But that's Maybe. But this is a bigger map, which I can give you because I have other copies. That kind of, I, I have small, the small one there. It kind of, you can look at the whole. Um, and the and the land we're talking about is down here. And down by the houses. Down. Oh, all the way down. Yes, all the way. Okay. It's the map. It's the whole map. That's from oh, Bailey's yeah. Causeway. No. no, it's from Grasshopper, she said. All right. Yeah. Okay, Our that's just Bailey's is, um, Causeway. Grasshopper, but what happened so Grasshopper is the, this one. Um, Correct. the people that lived to the, yes, from Grasshopper down to Bailey's Causeway signed off easements too, like the people that owned the Cliff Hotel, yeah. Suzanne's. Right. Um, so that's what those other signatures are. That's we are just... We are just here for the North Central Beach Association portion, not the people that, I mean, like, different people that I know that live, are there different people in right. those homes than what are signatures on there now? Right. We are, we're not, we're not here for the, uh, you know. Right. That's why that dashed line is the grasshopper coming right, right out. And it goes yeah, and they're going that way. Okay. Um, we're just representing North Central Beach time Association. Time. Mm -hmm. You can have a seat. And she researched with me. Great. Uh, with her a little bit on the research. So you said it's from the high... High they, tide, low tide mark is basically what we own right now. Great. The, the, as far as the seawall goes and things like that, it's a permanent easement that was um, Mr. Gaffey had set up back in the 60s. It's 1961 so or 62. That's a permanent easement. Right. So, but just strictly for seawalls. It wasn't the beach. Right. So we, we get it now. It's just this whole strip of line. One says high water, one says low water, yeah. and it's all the way down from Grasshopper to Surfside. Who owns the uh, beyond the high water to the uh, seawall? Are that the homeowners across the, the road? It would be the permanent easement that was offered to the, the is it the federal governments or is it the town of Situate? I think it's the town. I think it's the town. Yeah. I think it's the town. From, from the end of the atoll. Yeah, yeah, the yeah between of the, the, uh, right. the wall to the high water mark. Probably middle of the road, right? From there to the middle of the road. Well, that's the road. It, this okay. is the seawall here going down. I think that's the high water mark. Yeah, so here's the wall. Right, so we're talking about this. Right. I was just curious about the section that's so right. Trisha, with this the words are written right there, there to there. Yeah. That's the beach. Yep. Yeah. Just curious. Right. So all we're talking about today is keeping the status quo of the way we are now, and we'll figure out whether we want to do another easement for the another 50 access. years, yeah. or whatever, or if we want to have it, the town accept it as a gift, which would have to go at an annual town meeting, and the yeah. citizens of the town would vote as to whether or not they want that land. Straight Our main concern line. is right now. Um, we didn't realize it, but we are uh, we have liability, which we had no idea. The board um, and um, we would like to. That's why we want to give it to you. We don't want the liability, and um, we don't even have liability insurance. Our board, so um, you know. Shh. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Don't worry. If something so happens, we do this, you know what don't I mean. I mean that's people. kind of what our board give is us concerned thirty about. seconds. Great. By voting this tonight, it's effective. Right. Then the town would continue the. The easement that we've had, and until such time if we decide we want to gift it, I'll ask Jim about the process. Our council, we, okay. I mean, if, if it goes that road, there's no reason we can't do it in the fall town. Could, could it be a permanent easement, and as it was the seawall instead of a gift, and so it could instead of saying a 50-year easement, we could just do a permanent easement right now, or well, we can't do no. it now. No. The best we can do right so now is to, to keep it the way that it is. And then the attorney, our town council will look at it and give us. And then we'll get together again and, yeah. and address all those issues. And yeah. wave so this is a temporary easement until a, yeah, we all that's figure so it you, out. You, we can all rest easy while we're still chatting that this, you know. Right. Say that again, I don't understand. They're giving us we're a just, temporary. All our, all our motion now is, is just to continue the current relationship indefinitely until the next step is figured out. And what but is that current relationship? But we're not liable, is no, what you're saying, or we still need... The easement would still be in... The current easement that's in place would be continued for an extended period of time until we choose to change that. And my question is, 
were we liable all along with this 50-year easement, the Beach Association, we're, or? We don't have that, we probably, if I may, we sure probably we do. don't have that information John knows. right now. That's what I was looking <laughs> at. But, wait, but John's, not, John's not town council. We don't want to put him on the spot here. So I, I would suspect that that's an answer best answered by, uh, best responded to by town council. So he'll come back to us and he'll say, here are your three options. Which, want Which one do you want to do? And we'll sit down with you and say, here's our options. And do we want to gift it? Do we want to easement it? Do we want to so not do anything? So as we stand right now, then the easement that we had with the town is temporarily being continued. Extended. Correct. And we can if we vote. Somewhere. Yeah, that's what we're voting right now. This is if, we, if we actually vote, yes. Yeah. If I can just make one last comment about this. I may have done the math incorrectly on the spot, but I'm looking at this mean high water line location, obviously just sketched in and we were looking at it. And as of 1961, which is 50 years ago, sea level has gone up by about seven, six or seven inches vertical. So that's quite a lot in. And as you know, that sand comes in and out quite a lot anyway, seasonally. So. It is important from a legal point of view with where that exact line is, but obviously where it is might be represented on this chart from 50 years ago is certainly not where it is now if you've had this much sea level rise since then of the vertical. Just something to keep in mind in the future when future Board of Selectmen 50 years from now or whatever are looking at this, one could wonder where that line may be. So we all clear on what we're voting for? Yep. Are you Content with that? Everyone's all set with that? Yes. Great. yes. Great. So we have a motion and we have a second. So we just need a vote. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous. Thank you guys for coming in. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Do you want your map back? Or yeah, do you want yeah, you probably information want back? I don't want that. No. Yeah, I don't want that. Yep. Thank you. for town council. Okay. I'll take well, it then. I actually, do you, now where was the original Beach Association building? Uh, yeah, it's on Causeway, Bailey's Causeway. It's that house between the parking lot. There was a post office. And it was a movie. It had to be a movie there. So maybe it was. So I heard it was used to be the North Situate uh, oh, yeah, Beach know, Improvement yeah. Association it's building. Park At that little house there, yeah. Oh. Nice, nice to see you, nice to see you again. Thank you for all your work. Number 11, um, Town Administrator's Report. Okay. Um, attaches the financial mo trend monitoring report on receipts and expenditures to May 31st. We'll have the June 1 in for your next meeting. It's just a little too close with Mary doing all the June 30th closeout, which we have to get in order for July 15th. Um, as I note here, the major receipt loss was state aid. Um, and then the other account shortfalls that you see here, you addressed at your last meeting with the interdepartmental transfers, which advisory approved. A um, couple of things I do want to point out. Neil showed me the uh, receipts for building activity for May 2011, up considerably over May 2010. So we may have turned the corner a little bit for there. We also had a very successful foreclosure uh, auction for two properties last month that Jane Lepardo did our treasurer should be commended. I think it's the first foreclosures we've had in a while. And um, this is Jane's tax title and aggressive uh, work on um, tax delinquencies. Uh, and we have a couple of more that we've just ensured that we've taken possession of. I just wanted to note here, because I think we get letters in Kim's office and my office, as well as the board might get some inquiries about pieces of town owned land that people want to buy. And they send us a letter and they say, I want to buy X, X, and that. And what um, you know, I really want the town to do is take a global approach to that, to look at all the parcels that we have. Steve Jarzembowski, the assessor, has provided a list of all town-owned property and backed out everything that has a municipal school, conservation, all that usual suspect uh, stuff on our town uh, facility or something we need. Jane has that list now. She's looking at to see if there's any strings attached to that in terms of titles or tax title, whatever. And then at some point, you know, we hope to come to the board with a short list of properties that may or may not be considered for us to sell. Generally, those will be small strips of land between two abutting properties or uh, land that 
frankly, is not developable in many instances, or in some cases maybe, but we're going to piecemeal it off. So we'll hope to have that in the fall for you. Um, the other thing is um, related to this, uh, when we talk about the town finances, and I mentioned here, and I think I've had a conversation with some of you, is uh, we have some debt that town meetings authorized for borrowing that we have never levied, that we have never actually gone out and, and done. And those really need to be cleaned up. Uh, and I think when we talk about town meeting stuff, uh, I'll ask you to look at some of those prior debt authorizations that just need to be rescinded. This doesn't mean there's a surplus balance left over from the money. It's just something the town tended to do and for whatever reason did not move forward. And some of them are pretty old and we need to clean those up because they, for the bonding and rating agencies, they look at debt that we can go out and drop at any time we want and we really need to clean those up. So uh, we'll be working on that. Um, so for year end for FY11, I just want to commend all the town departments um, in the fiscal austerity that they've employed for the second year in a row. And I think that that will put the town, as we spoke at our last meeting, in a good position uh, for our free cash and looking forward to FY13 as we just began FY12. Just before you move up, Rick, yeah. did you have something? I just had a quick comment on the uh, town-owned properties. I, I applaud that initiative that you and your staff are doing. And just at least from my own personal perspective, I want to look very carefully at that when that list comes because I would be, again, just, just speaking as one of us, very concerned about a little sliver of land being just the last piece needed so something that currently is undevelopable then becomes developable, particularly if it's in a sensitive area of one way or another. I think it's great if you've got a small sliver between two properties that can help one property or help another property and that sort of thing, great. But in terms of like current open space or adding to another property that would then drastically change what could be done on one of those properties. I'm not necessarily against it as a philosophy, but I just on a case by case basis I'm gonna really want to look at that. No, I think you, I couldn't agree with you more, and that's why there's a number of eyes looking at it. I mean, once Jane and Steve, Steve's done his part, Jane's doing hers, then Al's going to look at it. But um, I think you have to be very concerned that somebody could have a flag lot or a pork chop lot and go in and do something when that yeah. was, clearly wasn't the town's intent when it wanted to sell it in yeah, the first exactly. place. Um, the FY10 management audit has been completed. I would like to devote some time in your August meeting to review that um, and show the progress that we've made the last couple of years. I <coughs> you probably don't recall that we increased the appropriation to the auditor for FY11. Uh, it was usually a very low amount and therefore we were very limited in the selection of auditors the town could actually go with when the bidder came in. It's not a 30B process, although we do bid it and uh, we will be changing auditors for the next three to five years and that will be on your agenda uh, for your next August meeting as well as a review of the management letter. I just, uh, several of you know in the last week to two weeks we spent a lot of time down at Minot with the situation down there with the, the ramp. Um, we've, and since I say it four times in one sentence because I didn't proof this very well, we <laughs> twice put stone down there uh, to sort of uh, make the uh, e entrance into the, the concrete ramp there a little safer. That has not worked. I was down there for a couple of hours on uh, Friday with police, fire, and DCW. Uh, conservation agents and McConnell's today come up, well, actually, um, yesterday, four solutions that are of a more permanent nature there. Al has costed them all out. They're all, um, all of them, except for closing the entrance permanently, are around $10,000. We're going to research that further and probably, um, if I need to do something later with that, um, we'll let the board know. But right now, the gap at high tide, the con I don't know if you're familiar with the concrete ramp is actually at high tide underwater and there's a gap between that ramp and the rocks and people can't see it exiting. So what we've been doing is we've been closing that entrance um, at high tide. Can you just go over so people know what ramp it is? It's the, the one by the post Minot office? Beach. No, the, no the one on the other end? Right at the end of Gannett Road. So if you're driving down Gannett, you just go straight. Straight in. So, um, so there's a gap between the gateway to the ramp so that if the water's up high, you'll, you'll slip right into the uh, the gap. Well, you won't see that there's a hole. Right. No, as you're walking. At tide, you won't see that there's you a gap. You can fall right into it. As you okay. walk down and the I ramp. And I mean, it's not that serious that anybody that does it would. It's just 
I mean, some will, some won't. The folks are familiar, but it's enough of a hazard such that we need to do some remedy, and we tried to do something that put the stones, larger stones, smaller than larger, and um, it's just not a permanent fix. Ultimately, um, I don't have a crystal ball, but I think that that um, ramp is going to need to be uh, permanently closed in another entrance in. But then we have HP issues mm -hmm. um, as well. So it needs something more than a Band-Aid that's going to take a little more uh, work on all our part to make sure it's a, a permanent solution. And to his credit, Jim has come up with a number of ideas that we're going to start working through. Sure. I, I saw the pictures earlier. It just dawned on me now. Why not just shorten the ramp? It's a concrete pad. Cut it. You know what I mean? You know, the ramp, well, it's, it's much like right. Jericho, and it goes into the water the at high tide. The drop-off is so high there, Sean, right. that we and originally thought we could just remove the rocks. Right. But it's, a, it's probably, I would say, at least a 32 to 36-inch drop. So, oh, all right. And it's so to even slope it down or put some man-made no, material a, right. when, it's it, too steep. when it's going to be um, obscured during high tide, it really come, needs some solutions, and um, there's some natural solutions versus constructed uh, options that we're looking at. So, um, I'll keep, but I'll keep you posted on that. But I, I didn't want to let folks at home watching, it who, in case they wondered um, why that was regularly closed, and indeed might be closed at high tide permanently, um, because we keep putting a lifeguard there right now, and that's really not cost effective. The last thing is just for your information about um, a little project we did at the Kennedy School while I was there on seawalls. So I attached um, that, and there's a picture there. The two people in that picture, one is from New Zealand, the other is a city councilor in Juneau, Alaska. So I think they very much enjoyed having a seawall discussion. Um, and as I say in the summary there, what this was was a class case study on possible scenarios and s potential solutions for uh, seaball issues in the town of Situate. So uh, I'll just share that all with you, and I think there was some good information. I had no input to it whatsoever. Um, and in fact, was not allowed to talk during the whole presentation. So I thought I'd give that to you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. For those that don't aware, uh, aren't aware, just went to uh, Harvard, uh, what was the actual, Kennedy School of Government? for uh, three weeks <clears throat> and they picked three case studies and one of them happened to be our, our seawall issue in town here. Um, I was not surprised but a little bit uh, discouraged the fact that some problems there's just not an answer to and uh, this is a, a prime example of all the things that we all have probably thought about. Um, you know, it's basically just a matrix of you can do this, this or this or you can do this, this or this and, and very often when things come before us we know all the options. There's just not a clear cut winner. Um, you know, there's pros and cons with everything, and that's this is a, a prime example of Which that. Which made it the ultimate case. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, what they're all about. Um, no idea. Right. so we didn't get the answer to our seawall problems with that. Uh, but with a that lot class. of paper. Okay. Any any comments from anyone? No. Great. We'll move on to uh, other business. Mr. Murray. Yeah, I sent an email out to you all about this, and I just wanted to mention it publicly, but uh, longtime Conservation Commission member Joe Urbanski passed away uh, over the weekend uh, from a long illness. And, Sean, you mentioned earlier tonight about somebody or some process made our town better, and uh, Joe was a guy who did a lot of work for this town and certainly made our town better, and he's going to be missed. There's a, uh, a wake for him on Friday, Thursday. Thursday. We'll be away from him on Thursday in Marshfield, and um, funeral on uh, Friday as well down in Marshfield. But I just wanted to acknowledge Joe's contributions to the town and for just being a heck of a guy. And I'll reiterate that there were many times when I was at ConCom meeting where he stood his ground and he, he, you know, said what he felt and really did what he felt was in the best interest of the town. And I, I uh, commend him for that, and it's a, a big loss for the town. Any other business, Rick? Anyone else? No. no. Uh, just a couple quick things from me. Um, I want to thank everyone that was involved in the 375th um, anniversary and the 4th of July celebration. I think it went out, went off wonderfully. Um, there was a pretty good turnout. It was a hot day, um, but uh, the, the 
dignitaries were there and they all said interesting things and Ed Cavell put a ton of work into it and um, we had a beautiful flag going, a flyover, um, some interesting speeches and um, overall it was just a, just a great event. So thank everyone that participated and everyone that showed up for that. Um, and just as another side, um, again you'll notice that uh, Joe Norton isn't here with us today but I do want to just let everybody know that he is progressing well and he is taking uh, uh, taking strides towards a recovery and uh, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with him and I expect to see him walking around town sometime soon. So um, for those of you that are thinking of him, uh, continue. He's doing better. Good to hear. Anything else? Great. We'll move on to um, the minutes. Move the minutes of June 23rd, 2011. Second. Second by Mr. Danny. All in favor? Aye. 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 And move the lastly. board of selectmen vote to adjourn the meeting at 8.17 p.m. and go watch the All-Star game. Good night, folks. Thank you. Second by? Second. Mr. Harris, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.